Are you studying to take the pre-trip section of your CDL exam? Well, look no further. This system right here has helped 100% of the people that have used it pass on their very first try. Work for them, it can work for you. Stay tuned, figure out how to pass that free trip. Alright guys, a little introduction before we get into a full example of a pre-trip, I just want to talk about methodology. First we're going to be using these three methods here, so a bit about each one. Sequencing, remember we want to have a specific order. If I was going to ask you to give me the alphabet, you wouldn't say J, F, Z, Q, W because you wouldn't know what you had said and what you had and what was coming up next. You'd say A, B, C, D, E, F, G because you knew when you got to G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P is next, right? It creates a geography. We know where we've been. And we know where we're going, so it helps us stay focused and make sure we don't skip or miss anything. So sequencing is that first methodology. That second methodology here is going to be something called grouping. Now this is just combining things together in smaller amounts and then building them back up into larger blocks later. So your phone number is a great example of this. It's actually 10 numbers, but in your mind, it is three, it is three, and it is four. It is easier for our brains to break things down into smaller units and then build them back up. So you will notice on the study guide that we talk about throughout this episode, there is sequencing and grouping built into that study guide. Now that third system is something, or that third methodology is something called vocalization. And with this, simply be saying it out loud and loud enough for you to be able to hear it because it does a few things when we vocalize. A, this is an oral exam. We need to be saying it out loud. We need to be used to saying these words because that's how we're gonna perform this exam is orally. So we gotta get used to saying the words. Additionally, when we say something out loud, it keeps us focused, right? The external and internal distractions get pushed way down because we're focused on the task at hand. So that vocalization also helps us stay focused. The third reason vocalization is so helpful is it's engaging multiple parts of our brain at the same time. We're seeing it, we're hearing it, and we're saying it. So there's multiple places that our brain is working to retain the information. So those are our three methodologies. Lean in using those and you'll find that you'll get this in your brain just that much faster. All right, so we see those three methodologies we wanna use. Over here is gonna be those five sections. This new pre trip has just five sections. First one's gonna be our in-cab with an air brake test, followed by our driver's side door and fuel area. Next is gonna be that coupling, then the engine compartment, fourth, and finally our lights inspection. So let's head out into the field and get an example of what these five sections look like when we actually go through a truck and trailer combination vehicle. All right, team, so excited to be getting out here for our brand new pre-trip. As you can see right here, I've got my brand new study guide. If you would like a copy of this to follow along with this, reach out to me directly. You can email me, DM me, or text me as well. Any of those will work, and I'll get this over to you. It is five sections. It's a little smaller than the old, uh, but still got some of the mandatory. So let's go take a look at what this looks like, starting with the end cap. All right, so starting with our in cab, we know we're going to use our three techniques that we just discussed, sequencing, grouping, and vocalization. The sequencing and grouping that I want you guys to be using and I am going to be providing on that study guide for this in cab is going to be four, 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 two. That first four is going to be our four safety, then followed by our four functions, then followed by our four stage air brake test, and lastly, our two brakes. That's going to be the tug test and the service brake test. So let's jump right into that four safety. All right, the first of our four safety is going to be our fire extinguisher right down here, properly mounted and secured and fully charged. Then our next safety is going to be our three red reflective triangles underneath the bunk. Next is going to be our spare electrical fuses kept behind this panel in front of the passenger seat here. And lastly is gonna be those light indicators on the dash. So if you need to put your code in, first you'll put that in. Turn your electric on, watch your ABS light come on on the dash and on the trailer as well, making sure that it's showing up on both and it's functioning correctly. 
We're also going to need to pay attention to our depth gauge right here, showing that it is showing the correct amount of depth that we have. Uh, and then we move on to those light indicators, left signal, right signal, high beams, and finally our four-way flashers. And that completes our four safety. From there, we can turn the truck on and move into our four functions. Now, our four functions is gonna go ahead and start with our windows and mirrors, all properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, adjusted to the driver, and free of any obstructions. Next is gonna be our wipers and blades. Pressing the toggle, we will see that our blades are properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken. They are operating smoothly, and those blades are in good condition. Next, we're gonna move on to our heat and defrost. We can see right here, we turn to this icon. Turn it all the way up, and we need to feel that defrost and feel that heat and tell that examiner they are both working correctly. And that final function is gonna be our horns, city, and highway, the fun one. So after that, we can jump right into our air brake test. So let's get into the air brake test. Now a little sidebar first, there will be an additional, more in-depth video on that air brake test because it is so crucial. It is the only place we can auto-fail the pre-trip. But this is a cursory overview of what it should look like. So if you follow along with this and you have any questions, please reach out, but keep an eye out for that additional video on the air brake test to make sure you get it just perfect. So the air brake test is gonna be comprised of four different sections. First, we need to make sure and do some things to get that truck and trailer ready for the air brake test. The first thing we need to do before those four stages is we got to push in these valves. That third test is going to be the pop-out valve test, and they can't pop out unless we push them in. Then we need to make sure that we have a sufficient amount of air in the tank, so I'm going to rev the engine to get the PSI well over 105, that's a threshold I like to use to make sure we have enough for that applied pressure test. And right about there, it looks like it is sufficient. Next, I'm going to turn the engine off and the electric back on so we can see that gauge, but the air compressor is no longer filling the tank. And the last thing I will do before I start my stages is turn that hill assist off. That way there is ample air supply to the trailer and we can really see if there's any sort of leak. So now that I've got those things done, I'm gonna get right into the first stage. The first stage is gonna be the applied pressure test. What I'm going to do is fully depress my service brake, wait for my gauges to stabilize, and when they do, I'm going to make sure I do not lose more than four PSI in 60 seconds while I'm listening for leaks. At that point, I'm going to press all the way down on that brake. I'm going to watch that gauge stabilize. And as soon as it does, I'm going to ask the examiner, will you please time me for that 60 seconds? At that point, that examiner will start your clock. 60 seconds will go by. He will say, that's time. You will take your foot off and you will say, I did not lose more than four PSI in 60 seconds and I did not hear any leaks. That second test is going to be that warning light and buzzer test. We're going to pump down our brake until that warning light and buzzer come on, which should occur at or before 55 PSI. So here we're pumping down, we're watching our gauge, and we can see right there at around 55, 57, the warning light and buzzer did come on. The next test is going to be the tractor and trailer protection valve pop out test. We're going to continue to pump down until both those valves pop out, which should occur between 20 and 45 PSI. So we're pumping down, we're watching our gauge, and we're watching our valves to make sure that they both pop out. There's one, there's two. And we can see both those valves popped out right around 30 PSI. So that concludes the first three sections of our air brake test. We need to now turn that truck back on, complete the final stage, which is getting our air pressure built all the way back up to governor cutoff between 120 and 140 PSI. That's where we need to get our pressure built up. So I'm gonna rev that engine until we hear that sound, and once we hear it, we'll denote it. All right, so now we've got our air pressure built back up. It's sitting right around 125, 130. We're gonna to continue to watch it, and as soon as we hear that governor cut off, expel that air, we will know that it's raised to that level, and we will denote when it happens. So we're almost there. Let's just give it a listen. This can sometimes take a second. 
All right, pressure's built up to right around 135, and there it goes. So that's our fourth test. That finishes the four stages of the air brake test. First, we had the applied pressure, then we had the warning light and buzzer, then we had the tractor and trailer protection valve pop out, and that final test was to get the air pressure back up to the governor cutout, which is between 120 and 140, and then denoting when you hear it so that examiner knows that you know when that governor cutoff goes off. And that's our four stage air brake test. So let's move into our tug test and our service brake test. Loosen up that chalk, hop out and grab it. Okay, so our tug tests are very simple. You're gonna see right here. Gently press on the brake, cycle it into drive, push in one of your valves, it does not matter which one. Accelerate gently, and when you feel that tug, denote to the examiner, brakes are holding, that tug is good. Then we push in the opposite valve and pull out the other, leaving it in gear, accelerate gently again, and there's another tug. So we know both of those are working. And finally, we do that service brake test. We get our truck up to five miles per hour and then gently brake to make sure the truck does not pull to the left or to the right. So there it is, guys. That's our in cab. That's that four, 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 two style. If you build this thing brick by brick, you should have it in your brain in no time. So let's move out to do the driver's side door and fuel area next. All right, so the next section here we're gonna have is the driver's side door and fuel area. This has four different components. We're gonna start first with our mirror and traffic monitoring devices, privately mounted, secured, not cracked, been or broken, and clean. Next, we're gonna come down here for our battery and box, properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent or broken. Connections are tight and not worn. There is no corrosion and the box is latched. Next, we're gonna move over here to our def and fuel tank and lines, all properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent or broken. Lines like all lines, properly mounted and secured at both ends, no abrasions, bulges or cuts, and no leaks. Additionally, no leaks from the cap, caps are on tight, and no leaks from underneath as well. That fourth component is gonna be back here, and it's a pretty big one. Now we're doing a flatbed trailer. It's a little bit different if you're doing a reefer or a box trailer. We have to make sure that we're mentioning the frame and cross members for the truck and for the trailer, all properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent or broken, no missing cross members. We also have to make sure that if we are with a reefer unit, we talk about the sliding rear tandems, or if this is a flatbed that has a sliding axle, we talk about that. Also being problem mounted, secured, not cracked, bent or broken, and pin is in the fully locked position and in good condition. And we also need to talk about this floor of the trailer here, the deck on a flatbed or the floor of a boxed trailer. We need to say problem mounted, secured, not cracked, bent or broken, and it's in good condition. So that's our driver's side door and fuel area. Let's move on to the coupling section. All right, that coupling section is a little bit more involved than our driver's side. It's gonna be three threes and two twos. So let's start with that first three right up here. You're gonna have your air lines, properly mounted secured at both ends, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, not leaking. Next, you're gonna have your electric line, properly mounted secured at both ends, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, no exposed wires. And then you're gonna have your glad hands, properly mounted secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, in good condition for those seals, and they are not leaking. All right, our next three is gonna be right down here. First, we're gonna have our trailer apron, properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken. Right underneath that, pressing against it is our skid plate, properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, and fully lubricated. And as we can see, there is no visible gap between that apron and that skid plate. Next three is gonna be right here. This is our platform, properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken. Attached to that is our sliding fifth wheel locking pin and airline, all properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken. The locking pin is in the fully locked position, and that airline, like all of our airlines, properly mounted and secured at both ends, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and not leaking. That third one there is gonna be the mounting bolts, all properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, and no bolts are missing. So that's our three threes. From there, we can move into our two twos. Safety latch right here, properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, and in the fully locked position. Coming back here, we have our landing gear and clearance. Properly mounted, secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, in the fully raised position with the handle secure, and an adequate amount of clearance that when we turn, it does not make contact with that mud flap there. Lastly, we're gonna have 
our kingpin properly mounted and secured back there, not crack bent or broken, and our locking jaws properly mounted and secured, not crack bent or broken, and fully locked around the kingpin. So guys, that's our coupling, three threes, two twos. Let's go ahead and move on to the engine compartment. All right, so we're gonna unhook both of these latches here. The deer guard can be a little tricky. So if you pay attention here, if you put one hand on the inside, one hand on the outside, give it a couple tugs, it should loosen up for you there. Gotta have that down to be able to open the engine compartment. And we'll unhook on this side as well. Now when you lift, it's best to lift from underneath the wheel well here. A lot of guys try and pull from the front and it can be a little difficult to get it. So if we lift here, we can just toss it right open. So we'll start at the front of the truck. Remember with our engine compartment, three, three, two, two, three, three is a way to kind of break it down in your brain. So as we're standing here in front of the truck with the examiner, we're going to say there are no leaks of any kind underneath the vehicle and there are no leans. From there, we'll move over to the passenger side. From here, we're gonna to wanna to do our passenger side general hoses. All properly mounted secured at all ends, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and no leaks of any kind, no fluid, and no air. From there, we'll move over to our driver's side. Watch your head here. And from the driver's side, we will do our driver's side general hoses. All proper, properly mounted and secured on all ends, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and no leaks of any kind, no fluid, and no air. From there, we move into our three fluids. Here we have our coolant, properly mounted secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, filled to manufacturer specifications and not leaking. Right down here, we have our power steering fluid reservoir, properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, filled to manufacturer specification and not leaking. And our third fluid is gonna be that oil. And right here, we can see it's filled to manufacturer specification and checked with the dipstick. Next is gonna be our two twos, starting with our steering gearbox and hoses. Properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent or broken, not leaking, and like all of our hoses, properly mounted and secured at both ends, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and not leaking. Next, we're gonna go into our steering linkage. That's going to be our pitman arm, our drag link, and our tie rod down here, all properly mounted and secured at all ends, not cracked, bent or broken, and not missing any cast nuts or cotter pins. Now that second two is gonna be our braking components. First is gonna be our brake lines, properly mounted and secured at both ends, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, not leaking. And now the remaining braking components, we need to assert that there are no contaminants of any kind, oil or debris. That's gonna include those brake pads, brake rudders, any of that extra stuff, no contaminants. After that, we'll move into those two different threes. That first one is gonna be about our suspension. First, we're gonna have our spring mounts, properly mounted and secured at both ends, not cracked, bent, or broken. Then we're gonna have our leaf springs, properly mounted and secured at both ends, not cracked, bent, or broken, and not shifted. And then our shock absorber here, properly mounted and secured at both ends, not cracked, bent, or broken, and not leaking. And that final three is gonna be about this wheel. Now our steer tire is properly mounted and secured, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts to the tread or the sidewall. It has been filled to manufacturer specifications and checked with an air gauge. It is also no less than 4 30 seconds of an inch, checked with a depth gauge. Next is gonna be this rim, properly mounted secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, no unauthorized welds. All the holes are round and they are unworn. And finally, we have our lugs, properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken. None are missing. There are no rust trails or powder residue. No shiny studs indicate that it's loose. And there are no cracks around the bolt holes. So that completes our engine compartment. From there, we can move on to the lights. All right, and that final section is gonna be the light section. So. The way I want you guys to think about this is you're checking four things in four ways and then you're doing your five by fives. Now those four things are gonna be lights, lenses, reflectors, and reflective tape. And we're gonna be checking them all to make sure they're properly mounted and secured, not cracked, bent, or broken, clean and illuminated, and amber to the front and sides and red to the rear. So I have five clearance lights, two headlights, and two runners. And we have a light here, another light here and here, reflector on the back of the headache rack, reflective tape along the rub rail here, 
another light here. On the back of the tractor, I have two lights, two reflectors, and reflective tape on both of my mud flaps. Continuing down the side of the trailer, I have a light here. Another light here. Right here we have our ABS light and another light here. On the back of the trailer, light, 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 and reflective tape on the top and the bottom of the DOT bumper. More reflective tape here, and don't forget this little light here. Another light here. Light. Light, and if you forgot the back of the truck, you can do it right there. Light. Light, and finally right here, a light. The next section of our lights inspection is gonna be our five functions at five locations. And this is making sure that when we put signals on inside the vehicle, we can see them outside the vehicle. So you'll say to that examiner, it's now time to begin my five by five. I'll be checking my five functions, left signal, right signal, four-way flashers, high beams, and brake lights at my five locations front of the truck, both sides of the truck, back of the truck, both sides of the trailer, and the back of the trailer. Will you help me, sir or madam? And after that, they will help you administer that functions test. And that's it, guys. That's our whole inspection, all five different components. Again, if you're interested in that sheet, reach out to me directly. I'll get it right over and you can follow this exact same system we just used. All right, guys, there we have it, a full pre-trip vehicle inspection using our five different section system. If you would like a copy of that study guide, please reach out directly, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Other than that, we'll see you next time. What these would look like. I seem so excited to be getting out to this. <laughs> and then the engine just explodes. And the only thing that they have left is this footage of us doing an air brake test.